What's going on, Reject Nation? It's Greg Alba here. And it's John here. So today we're going to do a special video. We're calling this video Great Trailers for Terrible Films. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, took a, we took a while to put this list together. Um, uh, we we had, like kind of brainstormed a little bit. We had like two trailers in mind and then... On Patreon, one of our perks is uh, we do a Google Hangout. There were three people in that chat that day. Gareth Hood, Andrew Hayes, and Totally Jumbled. And we told them, like, we had this video idea to do great trailers for terrible films that we were all kind of brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And then after that, John and I sat down and we thought about what could make the list. So here we are. Well, uh, here we go. Let's kick it off with number five. Number five. All right, John, you suggested number five. So what is it? Uh, it is the trailer for The Hills Have Eyes 2. The Hills Have the, Eyes Part 2. The sequel from 2007. I saw this film in the theaters, and uh, The Hills Have Eyes Part 2. And this film is absolutely oh. horrendous. It How is, was it in the theater? You know, in, the theaters, it was, in the theaters, it was agonizing. It was just an agonizing oh, experience. It's, it's, it's clumsy, it's disgusting, and the characters are annoying. It's everything wrong with a horror thriller. It's nothing like what this teaser trailer represented. The reason this is number five is because, yeah, we're aware this is a teaser trailer. Yeah. But it's nothing like what this teaser trailer hints at. I mean, like, what are the vibes you get when you watch this teaser trailer? It's just eerie and it's like being in hell. This is like a kind of a, a just a nice little piece. It's a short film to me. Like I watch this just periodically sometimes because it's it's just a perfect little horror movie in and of itself. And like that that little twist where the camera falls over is so simple, yeah. but it's it's so horrifying. <laughs> well, you get this vibe that it's going to be a slow-paced tension thriller and we'll have artistic type yeah. of style and direction to it when it's nothing like that at all. This was strictly made for the trailer. Yeah. This is not a scene that's actually in the movie. One minute trailer is exceptionally cooler <laughs> than any seconds well, yeah, of the actual film. Because the movie only, like the thing about the the first remake, Alex Aja's movie, is like it's, it's magical because it is really ugly and mean, but there's something inside no. of it that makes it more than that, you know? And yeah. It's, it's really gripping and it's really also well assembled. And then the second one just loses the nuances and becomes just kind of ugly. This is creative enough that it makes you go, oh wow, yeah. like, whoever made this must be making a pretty cool movie. Yeah. Too. <laughs> With a lot of, yeah, like you said, even the way just at the end, the crooked point of view becomes, it perfectly yeah. dissolves into the title it, card. And it, it becomes exactly. a new image out of the old image, and it doesn't look weird at all. Because like the shot also looks like it's just a shot yeah. until it yanks, and you're like, oh crap, we're in POV. And that, and that makes it creepy and underlying eerie the whole time. Like, it's a, it's a little story. All right, so number four on the list, I believe was suggested, it was either Totally Jumbled or Andrew Hayes who specifically suggested this one. I remember when one of them said it. Well, Gareth Hood lived through it. Yeah. <laughs> and when one of them said it, I, I immediately went, that has to go on the list. Because right when they said the trailer, I remembered seeing this trailer and thinking, this movie looks awesome. That See, is. See, I remembered the movie and I doubted you. But then when we rewatched <laughs> this trailer, like, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean again. And, and uh, we just rewatched it again right now. Yeah. It's for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, the second Transformers movie, which is hailed by many to be the worst Transformers movie of them all. I don't remember it fondly very <laughs> well, well at all. Now, we can spend all day talking bad about Revenge of the Fallen. We won't take the time to do that here. What makes this trailer so good, it's hailed as trailer number one but it's essentially a teaser trailer in the smartest way. Well, it's like a two minute trailer. Yeah. 50 seconds into the trailer, before that, it looks like a disaster film, but it, in a good way. It looks like a good Roland Emmerich movie. Well, yeah, because yeah. it looks like it, like we don't see anything that's too huge. It's yeah. not like your know, buildings toppling over. It's like these places that are a little smaller and a little closer to the ground, yeah. and it feels like that could maybe fit into the real world somehow. Exactly. You know? We don't know it's a Transformers movie until yeah. at one point you see this shot where this guy's in his like apartment or something, and then a Transformer goes like, through it, and you're like, is this a Transformers movie? Yeah. And then suddenly Transformer stuff starts happening, and yeah. it gets you excited to see the Transformers again. But the main difference that this trailer does as compared to the movie is this trailer makes it look like the movie takes its time, <laughs> has tension, builds. It actually looks it's scary. It's actually gripping. Yeah, it's a gripping trailer. I get chills when I watch this trailer. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, it, it, it is really compelling, and it, and it does just... It shows everybody's reaction to yeah. something and this kind of unexplainable destruction. Even when Shia LaBeouf's like, you run, you stay, you, stay, you, you, run, you, you stay, whatever he says, you run, you hide. <laughs> yeah, his dad's like, we're not going out. Go yeah. together. You don't stop, you don't hide, you run. You hear what I'm saying? We're all going together. 
together. That moment right there is intense. It yeah, feels yeah. like this is going to be personable and dark, <laughs> and it feels like the Transformers are up against a major threat right now. It actually hooks you in, and I, I remember watching this trailer going, I think they might have improved the movie. I... <laughs> yeah. I I believed it for a second yeah. watching it just now. I know Transformers movies have a reputation for having really good trailers for really bad films, but this one specifically makes it look like a great blockbuster. <laughs> this, this one trailer. By the way, all the links are in the description box to go see yeah. the trailers that we're talking Watch about here. Watch these trailers. Yeah. Study marketing. Yeah, this one has uh, and there's a tension to it, and it feels suspenseful and scary. And, and the most important part is, it, even though it's a trailer, it makes it look like the film will take its time and not be so scattershot edited like how that movie was. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's imposing instead of annoying yeah <laughs> when i saw revenge of the fallen it was almost like eating cotton candy for a really long time <laughs> it's just not gripping yeah. at all <laughs> this trailer is so gripping so number three on our list is quantum of solace yes. and um so as you can see we're going in order of most disappointing now the reason why uh this movie was exceptionally disappointing was because it's a follow-up casino, casino royale, royale. <laughs> almost like the Bowl triumphant Bowl. return yeah. of james bond with a new look and a new vibe you know yeah. going more realistic showing how he got his double O status and stuff like gritty, that. Gritty, making it a lot more personal. Yeah. And a lot when, more buff, too. Yeah, and when this trailer came out, it was really cool. And watching yeah. this trailer again, I'm like, this makes the movie look really good. It at least makes it look gripping and intelligible. Yeah, and it looks like a Bond movie. Yeah, and that's, it does. That's the biggest thing about it, was the way this trailer's edited. It, it's edited to the music so well, and they chose all just the right little seconds of the movie to make it look like a cohesive film that is shot well and has great action and Bond humor. Like Revenge of the Fallen 2, this has that quality where it makes it look like it takes more time, whereas yeah. like, I remember that movie feeling like it was edited and a crazy yeah, mess. Like, what is that, happening? That's probably the biggest takeaway I got when I watched this trailer was the action scenes look more bearable in the trailer than yeah. in the actual movie, because in the actual movie, it kind of kicks off with this crazy car chase and then Bond shooting and then they even have that really cool shot in the trailer where he, they fall they off fall a building and they go into the glass. Yeah. yeah. That, it looks so cool in the trailer there. Yeah. Or when he's falling from the rope and he, he's caught on by his ankle, then he shoots the gun and goes to the 007 <laughs> credits. They took the best moments of the action parts that you can visibly tell what's going on and made it look like the action in here is going to be really cool. And they took moments where they when sliced together, it looks like Bond has a sense of humor. It looks like you got a good Bond romance going on. And it was exciting because it was the first time where it was going to be a direct sequel to a Bond movie. Yeah, that picking had up a, where the last one left exactly, off. Exactly. You know? Having a, having a storyline that's following through from the last Serial one. Serial Bond. And then because they did that, it actually made the movie worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then you throw up your hands and you're like, what? how am I going to know the exciting yeah. conclusion to Casino Royale, I guess. <laughs> I want a Quantum of Solace from this movie. Yeah, and then it made it look like it had a good villain. It looked like it had all the right Bond ingredients it was picking yeah. up from where Casino Royale left off. And, but it was just a really well executed trailer. Nothing yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Because this trailer feels like a movie, and the movie to me felt like just being hit in the head with a brick a lot. Like, <laughs> number two. Number two on this list. Number one and number two, we thought about for a while. And, this was that uh, but, summer, man. And, and, yeah, this is the same year, right? <laughs> this yeah. was that <laughs> summer when all the great trailers were dropping and all the <laughs> all the not so good trailers had the good movies, and all the great trailers were very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. And, and this one was a major one this for, one for was the both a, of us. Yeah, because this trailer sold me like I would have sold my body to this movie. Yeah. Terminator Salvation. Oh my goodness. This was a turning so, point. <laughs> so much about this trailer. I mean, First off, when you heard Arnold wasn't going to be in it because he was governor at the time, yeah. it was like, well, then why make it? When you see the trailer, you're like, all right. I see. Yeah. You're going to take this in a further direction. Yeah. I get you and now. It, it has this like apocalyptic Mad Max vibe with a lot more Android technology. It looks like an epic war film about yeah. the resistance versus the machines. And it like was, like having an actual fight, like that yeah. there's they're matched on. It looks like emotionally intense and heavy. Yeah. They took moments that <laughs> don't play so effective in the movie, like when he's firing the Gatling gun and yelling, and when he's shouting into the the walking. We are dead. If we stay the course, we are dead. We are all dead. 
Like in hindsight, this is a dark. Yeah, trailer. but it looks apocalyptic, like, war, emotional, epic. Totally, it's which is striking. this movie is not. It looks visually appealing, which the movie is not. <laughs> which you can't. I I feel like you can't. I know you have to get as many people to see your movie as possible. But the Terminator series has already proven to us twice at least that they can achieve that. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you promise that in a trailer like this, this trailer has everything you want. It's like, yeah. oh, Christian Bale, like he's hot right now, but it looks like he's really really invested in this. Yeah, because he's it coming looks, off of the Dark Knight on this. Yeah. yeah, and it's like McG is stepping up. He's yeah. talking a real good game about He's making about, a real movie now. Yeah, yeah and, and this is a series where maybe he could, and they were talking that game. They yeah. were like, no, 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 no. We're going to make this about the war and about the characters and about all that stuff. And then like two weeks before nah. the release... The word changed, and, and oh. The movie's not focused, it's really bad. And also, Christian Bale's, one of my biggest complaints about the movie was Christian Bale's voice in the film, it's... how he said every line the same. It didn't seem like a real voice the entire time, but in the trailer, it works so well, his voice. Yeah. Was... So you realize that that's the only way he talks, and then you're like, what happened to, <laughs> your, to your vocal cords? Yeah. And it even looks like there might be a heavy, like, romantic element with John with John Connor and Bryce Dallas Howard's yeah, character. Yeah, Well, and there's that whole thing with Marcus Wright, with with the, where they blow one of the most interesting pieces of the movie. Yeah, and it's a great moment. Like it was, a, it was a moment that when I saw it in the trailer, I was like, "Oh wow, I want to see this now." Like that was a clincher moment, and it gives just the whole thing away. It gives the whole thing away. <laughs> the and whole twist. They they keep giving away twists in Terminator trailers. <laughs> and the Trent Reznor soundtrack over this trailer. The day the whole world went away. Brilliant, yeah. beautiful choice of music, and I mean it's not used in the movie ever, which could have benefited from it. <laughs> yeah, like dude, yeah. If Trent, if David Fincher wanted to make a Terminator, yeah. like Trent. <laughs> Resident. That would be an all right idea. <laughs> because the, yeah, the tone and style communicated from the trailer uh, is just not what the movie represents at all. It is, it is terrible film. I can't, I can't even rewatch it. I've tried rewatching it and I just, just turn it off. It I can't just stand it. It doesn't do much of anything. It's just kind of, it, again, it's boring. <laughs> it, 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 it's, yeah, it's that same kind of like, it's, it's plotting and it's kind of excruciating. Like, like it's all the excruciating parts yeah. and none of the rewards and none of the, the depth that they kept promising you. It just kept being like in a helicopter yeah. crash. <laughs> like that helicopter crash is like a good metaphor for that movie. All right, so number one, here it is. Did you guess it? Did you guess what the best trailer is Did for you? a terrible film? It's X-Men Origins Wolverine. Aww. Do you remember being excited to see this film in the theaters? I do. X-Men The remember. Last Stand was the prior installment in the X-Men franchise, and that was a major disappointment. <laughs> But yes, when this was. trailer came out, because we kind of liked it at the time, because the X Men trilogy had been building up a lot of Wolverine's origins. They have, and it made sense. Mm -hmm. Like this was a prequel that wasn't like we, we all, don't need this. This was like, yeah, this is, this is cool. We can all finally find out. They what kept Wolverine's, hinting at it. Yeah, now we'll get to see the whole thing. And we only got little pieces of it. We heard of William Stryker in Part Two, yeah. you know, and then you finally get the origins <sighs> trailer, and boy, does it look epic, fantastic. Logan has never been more buff until future installments. <laughs> and then, and then but this is the buffest he's ever been. It has the Wolverine yelling, grunting the whole time. The well, and it's it, also got like the bone claws and the yeah. stuff of the uh, saber tooth and, and Liv Schreiber. It, it has like him as a child, him in wars. Yeah. And showed all this yeah, great it's got that, like Civil War stuff it's and got like the Vietnam the War yeah, stuff. The Vietnam yeah. War stuff. Like you got the hint of the other comic book characters. Gambit was being introduced in the trailer. And like, it looks Gambit's like finally he joins here. this movie from, yeah. the, from the trailer. Like you know, it gets you amped up to see how they yeah. bring him to the screen. And Sabretooth is such a popular X-Men villain, and then you see that he's going to be the primary villain here, and it's like, oh, cool, because he, he was just in part one, and he never came back, and now he's going to be here, made. too. And then the epic music with it, the visual effects look good. That shot where he's on the motorcycle, and then it, it gets blown up, and then he's jumping towards the helicopter yeah. looked real. looked like a real stuntman charging at the helicopter. That's a pretty good shot, at least, at least again here on the small screen. Yeah, <laughs> and then come to find out, None of that works in this movie. It's not epic. It is beyond dull. It's, it's beyond boring. The visual effects suck. Yeah. Gambit's a disappointment. Sabretooth is one of the redeeming qualities of the film, actually. He was one of the good things. I remember that movie having a very meandering pace and sort of like sequence of yeah. events, you know, and it, and there are times when it gets down, downright wacky. It's awful. Like when they do the whole thing where like the dude gives him his clothes and he like ruins their bathroom with yeah. his claws. Like, and the claws, everyone made a big deal. 
and I try not to make a big deal of, of these things, but like the claws do look oddly not finished. Yeah, you know, it's it's strange, and so it was a weird viewing experience. I just feel real bad for Gavin Hood when I think about this movie. Yeah, he hasn't really done anything great since. Um, you know, Ender's Game did okay. Yeah, okay is the word. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is too, when we're talking about Wolverine seeing his origins of yeah. uh, him as a child, him in these wars, and then you come to find out. That's all you see is what you see in the trailer. It's just a montage. Just a montage. <laughs> it's just a long montage over the opening credits. You're like, you don't get to explore any of this stuff. <laughs> but the trailer makes it look like you're going to get to really explore all of this. This trailer leads with so many things that are just small interludes of the movie. Yeah. And that's what is so frustrating. It, it, it doesn't hint at any of the actual movie that's inside <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah, it's like they just distilled the best parts into the. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, and other things that got you looking forward to you know prequel syndrome stuff even like young cyclops which doesn't make sense to me still yeah because he must be like 45 by the time <laughs> scott summers is played by james Morrison. yeah, yeah. I, the, I, i've just decided with the x-men series to just you know always be soft yeah. on the continuity you know uh ryan reynolds is like everyone's like psyched to see yeah. what he's gonna do is wade wilson and that was like his audition tape and and that was one of the the good things about that movie that left and got worse that's true you know? But the thing is, the trailer, though, by this trailer specifically... Makes it look huge. It makes it look huge. The, the thing about this trailer specifically, of why I think this is the war the best trailer for... The best trailer of them all for the worst list, is because it makes it look like a completely different kind of film. Yeah. As opposed to, it's like, yeah, I'm, I remember all this stuff from, like, Terminator Salvation and... Quant like, I can still see how the, the film came out that we actually saw. With Origins Wolverine, I'm like, this film looks exciting and entertaining and <laughs> jam-packed with fun and explosions and epicness. <laughs> and that is, it's the exact antithesis to that. It is just not what this trailer is. This trailer makes it look like a really good movie. <laughs> this this trailer makes it look like a, a Wolverine story yeah. and, a, and the story about the people he was with along the way. And it's just... It looks like an emotional yeah, journey. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like, a, like a story about a man's life, yeah. you know, in a, in a comic book kind of way, too. Because it does have a comic book feel does feel broad and expansive it, it gets you excited on kind of all the levels you want to be excited about a wolverine movie and then it doesn't do that even the touch with like him so. with the claws and it goes ooh shiny it's ooh shiny it's like oh man this guy knew him before he had yeah. him. <laughs> no metal claws. I knew you back when those were just bones. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, when we did this list, we were trying to think of movies that are universally perceived as bad films. You know, there were yeah. there were other films that we we thought about that like films that we personally didn't like, but we know that a lot of people do like them, so we didn't put them on the list. These five were really. It seemed like every time we've talked about this, these five always come to mind. And yeah. So like these might might not even be the best examples, perhaps, but they we they always come to mind for us. So we felt like it were a, a good place to start. Yeah. Which causes us to ask you guys, what trailers do you guys have in mind? Like, put mm. put in the comments below, what are some trailers that you thought were fantastic, but you thought the film was actually just flat out terrible or completely misrepresented the movie? And what do you think of our list? Maybe if people upvote certain ones of them enough, we'll make another one of we these. We can make another one. Maybe, yeah, we'll just take what you guys have to say and make our own video out of it. Why don't we give credit where credit's due? You can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. He is Dat John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram social media manager at Blumhouse and go check out our Patreon for exclusive perks and rewards. Having a total blast over there. Would love for you to join the community. And check out our t-shirt designs up on Spreadshirt.com. Link in the description box as well. Good day. Have a happy day.